The term IPM can mean different things to different people, but it stands for Integrated Pest Management. And what it aims to do is to integrate the three control measures that are available, which are pesticides, biological controls, and cultural controls, and integrate them in a compatible way so they work together and don't work in opposition. Integrated pest management can work in any crop, can work in intensive horticulture, and it can work in arable crops. We've worked with growers in Australia and a little bit in New Zealand to help them understand that it's the same concept. There's a set of pests to be controlled and there's only so many control options they can do. The three elements of IPM, so the biological, cultural and chemical options, are the, if I talk about the pesticides first, the, the main aim is to not use things that are broad spectrum that will kill the biological controls. And then the cultural controls are things that will either improve the input of the biological controls, can either give them food and shelter, prolong their lives, just improve the level of biological control, or the cultural controls can be things that reduce the pest pressure, things like weed management, things like that. We get contacted by growers for different reasons. Most commonly, and it's unfortunate, is where there's problems with resistance. And so if you've got a pesticide-based strategy and the pesticides stop working, then obviously you've got a problem. But there are also growers who want to change because they would like to do things without reliance on pesticides, become more sustainable, and get better control with less reliance on synthetic pesticides. There are many reasons that people might want to use IPM. Like I say, the most common is failure of their current program. But if they, if they can't control the pests adequately, then the quality of their crop is not as good. So people often come to us where they need to get improved quality. It's very rare for people to contact us to try and save money on pesticides. It's, it's usually about quality and sustainability. Integrated pest management works in any cropping system, but they can look very, very different within those systems. For example, with tree crops, some of the important factors are tree height, tree spacing, inter-row management. All these things have a massive impact on beneficial species as well as pests. You know, they're very different to what a veggie grower might do in controlling pests. You know, they have rotary hoeing, they have shorter cycles of crop production. You know, lettuces might go through in seven or eight weeks. You know, it's not a, like an annual crop, so it's, it's very, very different. And then protected cropping, because a lot of beneficial species are screened out, essentially, and the environment within that the polytunnel, for example, is very different to outside. The control and the IPM is very different. Commercial producers might be needed to sell beneficial species because they're not going to occur naturally. So IPM systems are made for a set of pests in every different crop type. Sometimes people think that IPM is, is really complex and they think that they have to identify a whole lot of different life stages of insects that they've never seen before. But actually for any single crop, there's not that many pests and there's not that many beneficial species. So it is actually quite possible. And once people get used to relying on naturally occurring beneficials, especially in vegetable crops, it's actually much easier than a pesticide program where you have to know what rate, withholding periods, application rates, a whole lot of things. Whereas with an IPM strategy, you're relying on things that are already there and you're just in managing them in a better way. We sometimes hear people say, oh, we tried IPM and it didn't work. And when we look into it, most often people didn't try what we would call IPM. They tried things like stopping spraying or substituting 
conventional sprays with something else or buying bugs that uh, are commercially available. And that's not IPM. I, IPM is not just doing nothing and it's not buying alternative products. It's putting it all together so that you get a compatible set of controls for the set of pests that are of concern.